so excited to be back with you from uh, uh, with the drill. Steve Lowry, Tom Hofarth. Now we're in Carson, California. We're always in Carson, California. Superfly. We're superfly today. Now, normally I would in introduce uh, Eric and John, but they're not here because they got stuff going on. Work ethic. Yeah. Anyways, we have our friend and our uh, new workmates, Elizabeth Hurd. What's up, Eric? There you go. Did you get ah, it? Did you get it? Did you make you the switch? There it is. All right. And Nicole Sharon. Call me John John for short. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boom. Love it. Oh, my God. That was awesome. Uh, Elizabeth and Nicole have been working on the show for the past couple weeks. They're also uh, really in charge of our website, which is coming along slowly, but the drill, beautifully. The drillla.com looks yeah. nice. Oh, it's, it's fully functional. At this yeah, point. check it out. It's called yeah. the Drilla. And, and there's a great logo on there, the raccoon done by John Tho uh, Jim, Jim Thompson, Thompson, our illustrator, Jimmy yeah. Tunes, Jimmy Sports Tunes. And uh, so we wanted to start the show today. We're taping now on a Thursday afternoon. The World Cup has started, but... Um, <laughs> it's a disaster. But there was a Dodger game last night that mm -hmm. was kind of an interesting uh, few twists in there. Uh, anybody at the game last night? Uh, uh, I was. Oh, really? Yes. I was, too. I was there. Oh, All right. really? So tell us your tale. What happened? Well, anybody see Kemp? Kemp. Kemp. You know, for the few innings he was in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So so the, something happened with Kemp, and he disappeared. There was a fight. Okay. He plowed into home. Okay, so number one, catcher. number one, Elizabeth, uh, you're actually, uh, we should mention, Nicole and Elizabeth are students at the University of Georgia. Uh, Nicole's actually from Southern California, Manhattan Beach, but Elizabeth <laughs> is actually originally from Georgia. Uh, I'm a true bulldog okay. from Georgia. Is this your first time in California? Have you been here before? I came last year. Okay, all right. Yes. She's from the good part of Georgia. She now, said. was this your first time at Dodger Stadium? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, yes. so the most important question anybody asks to anybody who goes to any Dodger game, what was the traffic like? <laughs> Horrible. Thank you. So and go with was, that. Tell us what, about it. What was the concession stand like with the Dodger dog? Did you have one of those? Uh, I just had a nibble of uh, Nicole's. Okay. And what did you think? She it was it. it was good. <laughs> yeah. I did not have all of it. That is a lie. She put ketchup and mustard on there. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't want that. That's wrong. But it was good, the That's little the show. little bit of and it. The traffic, traffic, but the was, traffic like... was terrible, but the navigator was worse. Okay. Uh, uh, Nicole. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Badass. Terrible. <laughs> How long did it take you guys to get out of the stadium? Okay, that wasn't bad. We really? were shocked. Well, it was we a were shocked. game because it emptied oh. after the ninth inning. People did you guys left. stay for the whole game? Of course. Yeah. Good, of good, course we good. Did. Okay. So number one, you have the Matt Kemp fight. Uh, was that exciting? Very. We were on our feet. Oh. Very nice. Phones out and everything. Right. It looked and like it was. As I would say, it was lit. It, yes, that's what the kids say. They say lit. Um, but what, did Kemp lose his temper? He looks like if he could have just walked away from that, he would have been fine, right? Oh, for sure. But he decided to uh, shove he, some more. He decided he went. He acted tough. He acted. Okay, now I'm going to go the other way. He he did something that was completely legal. The guy I, was blocking. Yeah, it was completely. It legal. seemed to me the other guy was he more was, upset. But Kemp could have just Kemp. I looked like he said, "What did you say?" and then pushed him. Like, right? Kemp could have just walked away. Mm. I, I don't think. Honestly, I think it could have all been avoided by him sliding into home. Personally, mm. Mm. but That's there was nowhere him to slide. He could have just slid. The catcher was blocked and had the ball, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, but he. Could I have think the the issue of, as always is communication. Yeah. You know, if they could have just talked out, they their should feelings. have talked it out. Yeah. Go on to some just, therapy. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, exactly. They need therapy. Or just saying, hey, you or hurt my feelings. Kemp mm -hmm. could have done like Kike Hernandez did in the 11th inning. And just like do like a cartwheel and get in there. Right. Touch it with his yeah. hand. Hey, were you guys there for the first pitch? Yes. So oh, did there you was, see the relay team? We relay did. Team. We saw the relay. Yeah. We, we were met, really excited we about that. That was pretty down, cool. We met her in Manhattan Beach, one of the girls on the team, not Kendall. Leg but, number two. Yeah, leg number two. We met ah. her. Leg number two. Is that how she'll forever be known? Wow. Yes. And how did you know it was her? We well, didn't. We didn't. <laughs> oh. My friend goes to USC, Tony Calusi, shout out. Um, but... She was like, after she left, she was like, yeah, that was, she was on the USC track team. We said, why oh. didn't you tell we were us? Like, Wait, what? Why well, didn't now, you tell us that? That's important. Yeah. What? Did you it, go, what up? Is that the term? What up? <laughs> we said, what's up, girl? What's up, girl? What if you're up? attempting to make us sound old and pathetic, mission accomplished. <sighs> you know what? If you didn't see it, what they did is, instead put, of them actually throwing the first pitch out, did yeah, you they, see this? They ran it. They had the four of them at the four yeah. bases. And then and who received the ball at the end? Matt, Matt Kemp. Kemp. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Started so. the day off right, ended it wrong. Very nice. Well, Elizabeth, so far, uh, how long have you, this trip, how long have you been in L.A.? 
I got out here Sunday night. Yeah. And so less than a week. Wow. Okay. It's been a whirlwind tour. Okay. All right. Well, there's much more traffic in your future. And, <laughs> and of course, in the year 2026, we're going to have tons of traffic because, of course, we now have the World Cup. The World Cup. Well, yeah. we have a part of it. United We bid. have a part. United yeah. bid. We have but the – we don't know which part yet. We can be certain that the Rose Bowl will get a ton. Levi Stadium will get a ton. California will figure heavily in this thing, right? right? It's, it's a, it's, so it's a three-way bid with Mexico and Canada. They're assured of a couple games each. How many games do they think they're going to be 80-something now that they're, that they're expanding it? Yeah, they're going to 48 teams. So the U.S. will probably get 60 of the games. We're guaranteed to be in because we're a host, so yeah, yay right. for us, yeah. And then there's, I think there's about 20-something uh, cities in the U.S. that are going to be whittled down to 10 or 12 that will get games. Right. And then if L.A. gets a game, which it should, you know, if it's if it's not a semifinal game or quarterfinal game, to me that's kind of a waste of they time. They got to do it, yeah. Even I got to think Dallas final. will probably get one of the big games. From what I've See, heard, we're going to get eighty percent of the games. So when it was in the U.S. in '94, yeah, I don't remember that much except that the Rose Bowl was again the, where the final was. Was the final? Was the final between okay. Italy and Brazil, and it was okay. an awful game. It's weird. A lot of people talk about '94 about being the year that they fell in love with soccer. For me, and I love soccer now, but for me, it simply um, confirmed all the things I hated about soccer because the game was boring. I don't think there was any scoring, and they went to that ridiculous uh, penalty, uh, penalty kick. you got to play it out. Yeah, which sounds like playing rock, paper, scissors yeah, to de uh, you know determine the most important championship in the world. Take a take a clue from hockey. You play it out. Yeah, play. yeah, and, and, and the guy who was the, the most publicized guy back then was a guy named Roberto Baggio for Italy. And he skied his kick, and Brazil won because Brazil and Germany are contractually obligated to win the World Cup yeah. every year. So, so when was the Women's World Cup? Was it 92? No. no, 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 99, right? Oh, 99, that's right. So Elizabeth Brandy was talking Chastain. about Chastain. That's right. Yeah. Now, was that? That was a much memorable uh, Well, Elizabeth and I were talking victory. about this, yeah. that I said, hey, do you follow soccer? And she said, I follow women's the soccer. Women's World Cup. Yeah. yeah. The women, World U.S. Cup. team. Was that a key moment for you? Well, I was two. <laughs> But oh, you're killing me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's definitely it changed women's soccer for yes, sure. It's absolutely. One of the monumental moments. Yeah. But yeah. You told me you actually prefer women's soccer to men's. Why? Because I played women's soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the US the women's team is just they're just better. Yeah, they're actually good. So have you got right. to meet Mia Ham while you're here? You know, she lives in Manhattan Beach. Um, I, I will. I'll go to her house, knock on her door. Oh, well, you don't have to do that. Go to the tar <laughs> Go to the Target on Sepulveda. All right. Yeah, I will right. be there that. with Carrie she's Walsh. She's there with the noisy twins. And Carrie Walsh. Yeah, yeah she's the right. twins. Do you guys right. know Kristen Press? Uh, no. no. You know Kristen Press, Elizabeth? Yes. She went to my high school. No, she's kidding. on the team. At Chadwick. Chadwick. Wow. There you go. Sweet. You can meet her, Elizabeth. That's wow. Nice. Yeah, I'll be her. Um, so yeah, we got that to look forward to. We got an Olympics coming up in 2028. So right. So LA's the place <laughs> just, again. Hopefully they'll have self-driving cars by then. Oh, uh, that'll be perfect. Yeah. And flying cars, and we can do that Star Trek thing where we dematerialize and end up because... Yeah, and Although I will say this, anyone who was here for the 1984 Olympics, Tommy will back me up on this, everyone thought that was going to be the traffic disaster of all time, and in a beautiful moment... It was perfect. This is the one time fear benefited people. Yeah, they all A left. bunch of people <laughs> fled, and, and Tommy and I had to cover that Olympics. It was and a we, great Olympics. And all of our papers mobilize to say, okay, how are we going to get our guy from the Coliseum yeah. to Long Beach or whatever? And it ended up the mo two weeks of the easiest, no traffic because everyone left. Thing, yeah. It was beautiful. But I don't think that will happen again. And unfortunately, it's the one the Russians boycotted. So the U.S. won a ton of medals. And it yes. was like a huge U.S. party and yeah. on U.S. soil. And uh, there's great books about that, great memories of that. And, again, it's probably a reason why uh, L.A. was given the 2028 games. Yeah. Because all the infrastructure is pretty much the same. I mean, they're going to yeah. add a new, a new great stadium in Inglewood, but it's, it's going to be really cool if, if we're, you know, fortunate enough to be alive then. Right. Yeah. Um, it's not a given. No. So, so with the World Cup starting today, there was a game this morning, 8 a.m. Russia and. Okay, but even before, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen this. So they actually have like this kind of tramped up opening ceremonies kind of like the olympics but it's it it's kind of like it's pretty it, it, like disneyland yeah, it, it this is. would be chuck e cheese okay yeah, it it's just e. kind of it's cheesy like. truly so they have robbie williams who used to be a big star i guess in england he got really <laughs> criticized by the english press for performing at the russian 
World Cup because, of course, Vladimir Putin apparently has a, a fixation of killing former Russian citizens while they're walking the streets of England. And England Allegedly. Doesn't, yeah, doesn't really like that. We don't know if that's So he true. got criticized for it. So he's, he's singing, and there's all these people dancing around him who look like they, they tried out and were turned down by Cirque du Soleil. And then he turns to a, a camera. Remember, this is the most viewed television event in the world, and he flips off the camera. Yeah, Welcome a, to the World Cup. It was a Robert De Niro moment that, you know, just like, <laughs> really? Yeah, right. You want to do that? Yeah. I no. mean, I understand you're a little, uh, yeah. little pissy, but, yeah, you know. So Robert De Niro, I would say you're better than that. I'm not sure no. Robbie Williams is. No. I'm not, I don't know. So no. anyway, so then that goes away, and then the, the Russia-Saudi Arabia game begins. <laughs> Immediately on Twitter, everyone is saying that if Russia doesn't win, you'll never see the referee <laughs> right, again. Right, right. And if Russia does win, he'll be able to retire after the game. Uh, telling us all that pretty much everyone knows how corrupt the Russian government is. And that there is probably some fixing going on here. So a two nothing game in the second half turns out to be five, five nothing. I had no yeah. idea that it yeah. turned into a, a yeah. avalanche of goals. So I don't know. I don't know if that what was going on. But the on. ref is but safe. But we want to talk about since this is a you know an LA show, we want to talk about how it affects LA, and of course LA is all about media. Tommy. Fox paid a lot of money for these rights. Yeah. They got screwed before, yeah, when before the US knowing the U.S. Go. isn't going to be there. So uh, just horrible, number one. And tell me what else happened. Well, Telemundo is the Spanish language rights holder, and Telemundo is owned by NBC Universal, the big conglomerate. And so Telemundo, I think, is, is going to be very Mexican-focused uh, on this mm -hmm. World Cup, as they should be. But if, if you're just watching the World Cup, you have choices, which a lot of people don't understand. Um, with Fox, the games are going to be on KTDV Channel 11 or on FS1, depending on what else is going on. Right. This week, and with the U.S. Open being covered, the U.S. Open Golf being covered on Big Fox, a lot of these games are relegated to FS1. So what NBC Universal decided to do was, hey, let's put some of these games on, especially Sunday morning when NBCSN, which is the NBC Cable Sports Channel, when people are used to going there Sunday morning to watch Premier League, Let's put a World Cup game on. I mean, it's it's just sort of like their audience. So they're putting on the Brazil Switzerland game Sunday morning. It's a pretty good game in Spanish language up against the Fox broadcast. So Fox can't be happy that they're right. getting this sort of head-to-head -head cable competition, but it's within their rights to do that. Right. And and and, and in fact, I watched the game the the Russia Soviet the, the the Russia Saudi Arabia game on Telemundo just because I like the sort of sing songy it's, yeah. it's it's a melodic sort of you you don't really listen to what they're saying of course until a goal scored and right. other counters loses his mind right and that can get old after a while but it's kind of it i was explaining this to a friend it's kind of like getting out an old concert t-shirt and you wear it for a while and then after a day or so you get yeah i'm putting it back in the drawer right. it was good to wear it was good nice memory yeah but you know andres is going to do this every every time a goal is scored make it sound like it was the game winner of the championship right game. but um He's the Gus Johnson of soccer, right? <laughs> but in a good way. I yeah. think he's very well-intentioned. Yeah. Gus is sort of a showy guy that oh. just wants to. So, But the other aspect of this coverage is that since there is no U.S. team in the in the tournament, Fox Sports has pulled back a lot of their broadcasters. They have six broadcast teams. They only have two that are actually in Russia. The other four are calling the games off a monitor in West mm. L.A., which is an NBC practice of covering Olympics. You, you, right. you don't, you're not allowed – for cost reasons and just for security to send all these people to each Olympic. So you cover a lot of it right. in a studio in Stanford, Stanford, Connecticut. Um, they call games off monitors. It's become a common practice. They, they usually are not transparent about they're doing that. Right. Because they usually have the play-by-play -play guy and the color man doing the monitor game. And they have a reporter who's at the site who can sort of you know make it look like somebody's there. But you, you, you lose a lot. Um, I was going to ask you, you sacrifice about, some things. Do you think since now play-by-play -play people and color people are not really reporters at right, all? They're right. just, again, doing a television show. They're sh telling you what you can see, basically. Do you, do you think quality suffers that much now that this is how they do things? Or do you think there are certain things being on site that you get that you wouldn't get in a studio? Because even you'll, you'll be you watching like, like Sunday Night Football. You'll see Michaels and Colling, uh, Collinsworth, they'll actually be watching television as opposed to the game. They have to because they have to know what you're seeing and what they have to describe. Right. Vin Scully was the same way when he was doing the Dodger game. They, these guys have the, the TV monitor in the booth, so they know what you're seeing. 
they can they can match up their description with what you're seeing. Right. That's not radio. Radio, you can create everything. I guess what you lose is a sense of the intimacy of being in the stadium and like hearing things, and yeah. you can sense the crowd is groaning or something. That maybe you can't get in the audio. Right. Um, and that maybe that the broadcaster can add to a telecast that he yeah. otherwise can't. But so you sacrifice that. You give that up. I mean, when you weigh the pros and cons, maybe that's the biggest con. Yeah. You, and it and the biggest pro of doing it is obviously you know saving money. The, the broadcasters. Uh, you know, probably what you, disappointed they're not there, but you know what you're describing about being there. Tom has this on his his Twitter feed a few games ago. Uh, Oral Hershiser, <laughs> pick it up. What's he doing? And Joe Davis are talking about a game that's kind of a runaway game against the Rangers, and Oral makes uh, some reference to an Alicia Keys song, and he's kind of fumbling through it. And Joe Davis says, "Oh, you mean this song?" And before you know it, this girl's on fire in the stadium. Yeah. You hear the song playing because Dieter Ruhl has heard them talking and and just starts playing it right and then joe davis goes oh my god listen to that right. we say something and it comes on there now let's play stump the stump the band right. or something yeah. so it's funny because uh what they're saying is now influencing what dieter's playing right and they did it last night's game with matt with mac muncie max muncie yeah there what's the monkey song uh, uh i'm a believer no 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 <laughs> You remember Brass Monkey? Oh, oh, Brass Monkey. monkey. Oh, oh, the so, monkey. so when they start saying Brass Monkey, and then Dieter Rule starts playing Brass right, Monkey right, while yeah. he's on there, yeah, and you can hear that in the background. And so yeah. it's, it's kind of they got this thing going. I guess that's the thing is that <clears throat> if you're if you're a, a team announcer, people yeah. do expect you to be with the people and talking yeah. to the people yeah. and that kind of. But in these instances where the announcer has no connection to Albania, it, well, he has no connection to the producer who's doing right. the game. It's a it's a world feed, so yeah, they're just watching it off a monitor anyway. Even right. if they were there, they'd be watching it on a monitor. But this is where I think Fox again could get really screwed because you could say, well, NBC SN isn't going to get a big audience no. because it's in Spanish, and if it's here, a lot of people speak English, and that's all. And they they'd speak. be watching it on Telemundo anyway. But. but but here's the deal: if if let's say you're in a bar or something like that, no one's listening to the feed anyway. Yeah. So they might just decide, well, let's turn it up uh, to to NBC SN to have the Telemundo yeah. f- feed because if they score. Even in a crowded bar, you're going to be able to hear it. You can hear it. And that's what everyone lives for. And then, in in the case of NBCSN, the bar just might leave the channel on, so whatever the game is after that right. will get on, and right. they're, you know, then they are watching the channel all day long. Yeah. It gets you to that channel where you normally wouldn't have got to anyway. Right. So it's just another way to hook an audience and, and to sort of, you know, say to Fox, basically, you can't tell us what we can air. Right. We're airing it in a different language. Maybe the same picture, but it's a different language. Speaking of a television show, I'm bored that it's just you and I. So, <laughs> Nicole, come on. You should get yourself on there. There she is. Did we ask what you What do you think day? about any of this, Nicole? <laughs> uh, it's great. Y'all are killing it, <laughs> honestly. I mean, we were we were just in Germany. For, yes. Um, oh. And one of our friends, he is. He actually did a story on the beginning of the World Cup, and we he and I went to this um, Jason sports Levenstein. bar. Jason Levenstein. Jason Levenstein. We went to the sports bar, yeah. and the whole bar is decked out in all these jerseys from all the World Cup. And we were talking to them, and they were saying that they have to prepare like months in advance oh, for I all bet. the fans that are coming in and getting ready to celebrate and watch the games there. But they say that's the time of the year they make the most amount of money. Well, it you know what? Be. Like just recently, if you were paying attention, I think it was two days ago, uh, Spain's coach, uh, it was it was leaked that he was going to become the Real coach. Mm-hmm. And he got fired as Spain's coach. And, and, and I think it was Mike Wilbon on PTI mentioned, and I totally yeah. agree with this. As much as we say, uh, you know, we're into sports here, and I think, th- I think most people would say the most passionate sports base in America is probably college football fans. They're insane, right? But even the most insane college football <laughs> fan does not compare to a European soccer fan. They're nuts. And not always in a good way. In fact, many times not in a good way. And... I think that's the kind of like passion you see, but it can turn pretty ugly too, pretty you know, pretty quickly, and and especially in a place like Germany where you have people from lots of different uh, places. That that's, but it is kind of fun to kind of tap into that from a a respectful and safe distance. It'll get kind of crazy yeah. here in 2026 when that when that stuff uh, becomes pretty pretty real. In um in Munich they have two teams. I did my story on this for our class. Yeah. They have two teams, um, FC Bayern and then TSV eighteen sixteen right. Munich. And I interviewed fans from both. Yeah. And they both 
absolutely despise each other. Yes. Like the fan base in Europe is insane. It's yes. a whole new level. It's yes. East Germany America. versus West Germany. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And Bayern is like they're Yankees. Bayern, yes. Yeah. yeah they're yeah. they're yeah. the the thing. They're the most thing. Elizabeth, sport sorry. sport culture is definitely different in in Europe. Yeah. Because theirs is soccer. Right. They eat, breathe, live soccer. We have all kinds of different sports. Theirs is. Soccer. It's all about soccer. Old but now soccer. you guys are both from the University of Georgia. Yes. And Elizabeth, uh, last year, they go on a magical run right to the championship game. Yeah. yeah. What was that like? This is great till the end. Right. Exactly. We cried. Yeah. Yeah. We, we both cried. Our eyes out. People so, laughed at us, but no. we cried. Give us the moment, like because as what we're referring to is the national championship game goes into overtime, Alabama, Georgia, and right before the game, you've probably seen it, of course, the play where the Alabama quarterbacks throws the receiver and he scores the the play before that they they'd sacked the quarterback about for about a 20 yeah. yard loss and it looked like that's the game right so when he sacks him what are you guys doing we were pretty pumped the whole game where were you I guys I stood up and stood we were on at, my chair basically yeah we were at a restaurant where a lot of people go to okay. to watch games so it was really hype Justin Fields was actually there okay yep. he's the new freshman quarterback okay um so we were Really hype the whole game. We were kicking their butts. Right. And then all of a sudden. Okay, so then the guy goes back. Oh. And he's like, oh, okay. And then he, he like starts it. to throw and he throws. And almost the moment the ball goes up, you can mm. see, oh, that guy. Uh-oh. What they was forgot like, about him. What was that two <laughs> seconds like the for you guys? The change from, oh, my gosh, screaming. Everyone was going insane to dead silent. You we just hear walked a out. pin drop on the left. floor. Yeah. We left. And this is in Atlanta, right? Yes. Yeah. So some guy the home came team. up. He was trying to give a pep talk. Nobody was about it. Yeah. yeah. We were all wanting to leave. We were bawling our eyes out. It was honestly, I hate talking about it. It just makes me sad. <laughs> it's too soon, still. It's too, too, soon. Soon. Too, too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Okay. Too soon. Too soon. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, hey, and before we go, uh, last show with Ned Coletti. Please check it out. Um, we asked everyone their World Cup, the team they're going to follow, since of course the U.S. isn't in it. Who are you going to follow? I have Germany. Germany. I have Germany too. All right. Really? Wow, that's really brave of you two to to. Do you, you know, have... the old line is about the about the World Cup is that you work and you strategize and you sacrifice and then the Germans win. <laughs> that's oh. what the World Cup is. Or I the have to Brazilians. be loyal to All right. Germany. Then the yeah. three of us, the three of us are going to Alpine Village to watch the final. Oh, that'd be a, oh, that'd be a fun show. I mean, show. that would be I fun. have some German blood. I Alpine gotta, Village, make no, it happen. No USA. I gotta right. go with. You gotta go. Yeah. Go with Germany. Stay go true. Germany. You gotta stay true. All right. Stay true. All right. And you, your roots would be England. Uh, my roots would be getting gray, actually. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's a good old one. Joke. No, what, no, what Literally you? an old joke. They're English. Anyways, no, what are you? Tell me. What? I'm a half Italian, half Irish, and neither uh, of them are in it. No. Yeah, so you're out of yeah, luck. Out yeah. of luck there. The Irish. That's not surprising. Iceland. But the Italians, you gotta go Iceland then. Yeah, you're right. You oh yeah. Iceland. The only Honestly, other, Iceland. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Okay, yeah. I'll go Iceland. No, I'm actually. I said before, <laughs> I'm rooting for Argentina because I want Messi. To finally get everyone off his back. Yeah, you, yeah, that was your theory about the Capitals winning, too, because you wanted... Uh, and I was right about that. Yeah, you See? Right. Yeah, you yeah, heard right. it here first. That's right. Argentina. Anyone but Portugal, because I, even though I, 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 I think it's a wonderful country and all that, it seems like Ronaldo has too much. It's too much to be that good-looking and that talented and win that much um, stuff. Sorry no. to interrupt, but Tom, what what you doing with your foot? Oh, sorry. Oh. oh. Did my shoe get on camera? Wow. <laughs> Was I wearing my Stan Smith knockoffs? Wow. No, these are authentic. These are the real deal. These are Adidas. Can we just check out the high tops you, Do you got know going that on? Adidas, that's actually the guy's name? I know, Adidas. Adidas. Yeah. Das. It's Adidas? Adi yeah. Adidas. Das. Oh, that's How crazy, about that? Isn't it? Yeah. Mind blown. All right. Yes. These are old school. Taking wing. a vote. Yeah. The Adidas or the knockoffs? No, even I will vote for the Adidas. Oh, all right. <laughs> this <laughs> shoe, when I was a kid, I, I Like I said, when I was a kid, my idea that I had made it would be that I would have a Porsche and I would have a pair of... Well, I had to wait till Adidas I was adult to buy these because yeah. I couldn't afford these as a kid, especially the They're high so tops. They're so great. And I bought these at the UCLA student store when they were an Adidas team. And this is, oh, I mean, yeah. this is Bill Walton. Well, this if is... you remember, the UCLA team wore Adidas Bruins, mm -hmm. which were these with powder blue stripes. Those were beautiful. <gasps> Oh, Tommy. Gotta See, the idea, the idea that shoe culture is a new thing, uh-uh. No, no. Because when I went to school, I had to wear, <laughs> my mom had to watch every penny, so I couldn't even wear chucks, which were not hip back then. I had to wear a shoe called a Bob Wolf, 
which is basically <laughs> premium cardboard. <laughs> and um, and the idea that someday... Oh, yeah, you had to aspire to something. If this someone a, had this, you this knew their the dad Cadillac was a doctor or this something was, like that. Yeah, that was... Oh, yeah, when kids man. were just wearing these just to wear them oh. instead of a necessity of playing sports, then you knew. Oh, I would, ne- I would never get those and play sports. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, you can't. And then that's why it's held up, because I only bring them out for special occasions. I would have done what old, uh, what Italian women do, which is I would have bought it and then covered them in plastic and not let anyone sit on them. Yeah, just <laughs> right, like, right, in yeah, plastic, yeah. 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 Oh, it's, so they faded beautiful. a little bit, and I think they've held up well. Now, has it bothered you that every now and then I've just been cuddling your foot and you have stroking not, you, it? You've ignored me. More than usual, I mean. More than usual. Yeah, okay, yeah. Right. Tom, okay. I will say, yes, you were looking spiffy with your sport coat the other day, but the shoes, whole new level. I'm going to go coat Whole and shoes level. next time. Oh, oh, oh shoot. Coat that may shoes. be overload. Oh, bam. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good look. It's not a good By look. By the way, Father's Day, uh, one more quick thing. Okay. What sure. are you doing for your dads for Father's Day? Anything special? Well, well, what are we doing? Oh, we're going to, we're cooking steaks and we're going to a movie. Yeah, My dad loves the movies. I think we're going to see either a drift. A drift. Yes. Oh, that's My dad's across yes. the country, so. Yes. Right. A nice, a nice phone call. Oh, okay, that'd nice be nice. Call. I already, I good. left him a card. Good. Nice. Good. Love you, Dad. Some good. cash. Cash. Shout out to the dads I have no out cash. there. All right. <laughs> My, what are you going to say? I'm doing a column this week about uh, Dick Enberg wrote this book called Being Ted Williams. Ted Williams was his hero growing up. Dick passed away uh, in December. His son, Ted, helped get the book put out. Ted's also a broadcaster, just turned 30. And I talked to Ted about uh, what it's like to be on Father's Day, you know, without your dad for the first yeah. time. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Well, that's going to be me this yeah, year. Yeah. Hi, Pop. Sorry. Anyways, uh, <laughs> nice. well, I, we just had a moment of actual human feeling yeah, there. That was, that was uncomfortable. You Anyways. Come to my, my dad's coming over for a barbecue at my house. Do you want to come over? You can borrow him for You're the really day. You're really rubbing it in now. No, I'm you? saying, actually, I want you to come. Your I want to share my dad with you this oh, weekend. Oh, God. <laughs> Come over for hot dogs I and think, watch a Dodger game. I think game. you've really misread my oh, my I'm foot sorry. fetish with oh. you. So that's, oh, no. Uh, we're no. going to have to have a conversation after this. No. Anyways, I thought this went really well. And yeah. it was supposed to be 10 minutes. And how many show, How many minutes are um, we on? We're at 27. Oh, Per my usual, God. over the time. Absolutely. Because, well, the, because the girls won't shut up. Yeah. Ex- oh, excuse me. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Oh, God. We, so this can't end. Can you edit? Because <laughs> we're editing that. <laughs> this is the drill. Uh, John and Eric, don't rush back. We're good. Anyways, kidding. We love you. Uh, See, we'll, they could, we kid because we care. Yes, we uh, we kid. Uh, check out the uh, the Twitters and and the website, which and is the website, the drillla.com. Drillla. Drilla.com. The drilla.com. Pretty cool. And okay. um, have a good Father's Day. And hopefully, yes. hopefully the audio worked on this show. Yes. Okay. Elizabeth, hopefully. anything to say? See ya, Eric. Good. <laughs> John John signing out. Boom. The drill. Thanks a lot.